Hello, my name is Kim. In this tutorial, I'm going to show how I created the images that are used in my most viewed doodly experimentation video. All these images were done inside a GIMP and then, you, then doodly was used to comp the whole thing together. So let's get into it. The first thing you need to do is to find the uh, source material that's best suited for your role of what you're going to do. Because mine was just a uh, an experimentation to see if I could achieve the look I was after, I just randomly selected an image to test it out. So with that, so the first thing to do is once you've got GIMP open, is to drag and drop it, and that will bring in your source image. Um, I, ch I chose this image for a couple of reasons. Number one, it was the right resolution for what I was after, which is 1280 by 720. That resolution is what Doodly also is very familiar with and it sits nicely within the frame. So it frames up really, really well inside uh, Doodly so the drawing would work. That was my main, that was one of the things I wanted, as well as being a very lovely picture and it's, it's uncluttered and it's clean. That were the two, there were a couple of things which I really wanted for this uh, reference. So the first thing I've done, I needed to do with this one is it is a JPEG image. So I need to prepare the image first so that it's very, it's useful inside Doodly. Um, the first thing I need to do is actually clean out the background because I didn't want any of the background in there. So I needed to turn this at an alpha channel because it's a JPEG image. So it didn't have an alpha channel. So I also don't like, uh, I'll, I work in a fairly non-destructive way so I like from my original image I also created a copy and then did start working on my copy so if any point there's something which doesn't work properly I can go back to the original and just keep working um, so I've duplicated it I'm going to give it a proper name and then from that I will use the uh, color selection tool so I go up to select by color and with your click and drag it will select a, uh, a variation of the color so if you want one color you can just click and it'll select that color but if you click and drag it'll select a variation of that color so a, a temperature of that range if you will this gives you a bit of a start there's a couple other ways you can do it you can also use your magic wand Control shift a is deselect everything you can use your magic wand and that also gives you quite a good um, range of colors to kind of select out of uh, it also doesn't select anything in the interior either uh, this image had has one major problem with it in that it's got the white along the bottom um, for what I was doing I just also got rid of the selection down to the ends here as well just to get rid of it I'm just holding shift and adding to my selection so that I get rid of that too once I've got any sort of little fuzzy bits as well which I don't want to be in my image from that I just hit delete and get rid of all of the blue on the outside you can see that there's still a few bits there so deselect all um, if you want to double check that everything's clean just add a new layer in there new layer and paint it white uh, with the bucket and you can see that the edges are not that clean so I'll then go through and also clean up my edges with the eraser just because it makes it cleaner select the right layer you can spend a lot of time with your edges just because that'll also give you a better pencil drawing in the end so the more time you spend on your prep work the better pencil drawing you'll get out the other end but for this for this, because it was just a, an experimentation video, I didn't spend a lot of time cleaning up these edges, making them fabulous. It also comes down to your picture resolution as well. Um, once you're happy, you can get rid of that as that. So I've got my 
color image. Because in Doodly, I wanted to then layer up the color image over top the black and white one, I'm also gonna keep that as well. So with that, just like that, I'm then gonna click duplicate, the little button down there, duplicate that color image before I then go into creating the pe pencil sketch, which is what I'm gonna step onto next, creating the pencil sketch. Um, first thing I needed to do with the pencil sketch is to get rid of the color, which is very, easily done you can just go down to color desaturate desaturate and that brings up the desaturation dialog box it doesn't give you a lot of options uh, but you can choose the different modes for the way it averages out its color um, i just left it at default and just went okay and that gives me my black and whites or my gray and whites to start off with um, from there duplicate it, duplicate the layer twice. Um, from that, I get rid of the top image, the top one, because I'm not gonna work on that one. I'm gonna work on this second layer to start off with. And the first thing I'm gonna do is change it from a normal layer here in the mode. I'm gonna change that to dodge. You can see that does opposites to what it does. So the blacks are still there and the whites are there. The next thing I'm gonna do is change the colors to invert and that will hopefully turn it completely white um, it doesn't actually turn it white when you look at the picture itself like I get rid of what's behind it it's blown out white which is not great for me because white pure white bright white blows out and as you can see as it's dodged you can see that it's blown out and created a few squares and a few patches down here so what I'd really need to do is go down here and uh, or just in my adjustments, uh, my brightness contrast layer, probably just white, uh, dial it down a bit so that the white's not so bright white. And that should hopefully crash it down so it's not reflective or not, um, not as jittery as what it is, as what it was. You can fine tune that for quite a while just to get it right. But I'm just gonna leave it like that for now and work through it over top of that. So with that, with that uh, colors now inverted, I'm then gonna go over to filters, blur, and Gaussian blur. This now starts laying out where those line, where the pencil sketches are gonna go and how clear they're gonna be. The bigger the blur, the less of a pet pencil it's going to be and a more of a photo but the smaller the, depending on your image the smaller the blur the more it's going to look like a pencil sketch rather than a print so I'm going to choose to a point where it's this is where preview is really handy if you turn off preview you don't see anything but you click on the preview tab you can see what adjustments you're doing what they're going to make uh, I, I chose somewhere in the middle so that the eyes are really clear because that's the that's the biggest part for me to get that I wanted to make really nice and clear and look like pencils was the eyes so I've got quite a large quite a large number in this one to get that there and then hit OK that then creates this bottom layer with the pencil or the black and white image which is now quite fine in its detail. Then gonna select the one above it, turn it on so we can see what we're doing. I'm then gonna go into uh, quite a fancy tool inside a GIMP, which is Filter Edge Detect. And I'm gonna just gonna go select Neon. You can see that it then turns in and picks up the edges and turns them white, which is really nice. It, um, you can change the radius for how wide it is or how wide the pencil is. You can see as you wind it up, you can see that it gets the edges become more visible. And if you wind it down, the edges become real thin, almost what I'd call pacer or sharpened pencil line. So again, with the preview on, you get a quick feedback for what looks good, what is going to work and what does look good. The intensity shows out how bright or white it's going to be. Um, if you ramp it up too much, you can see that that's, it looks very much like watercolor or watercolor paper, but um, the intensity that I was after for this was fairly minimal. So 
I wind it down quite a lot, but really again, the eyes of the big thing which I'm after. So with a radius of, again, where I was, I was looking at quite a high radius and the intensity is quite intense as well. But I don't really want to be picking up all this detail, like huge amounts of detail in the face. And you're happy, just click OK. And the next thing then is to go to your colors because what we want is to invert those colors. You can then go to uh, the blending mode again over top of this to uh, really highlight those edges and go down to multiply. And it pops those edges even more. So it does look more like a, paper, a pencil sketch now, which is what, we're, what I was after when I created that. I can then adjust the levels, so go into color, levels, and we can see that in the option box there's not a lot of information in the blacks, but there's only a little bit of information down this end in whites for this top layer. So we can then adjust to bring more black sketches into it. You can bring it, you can bring down a lot of the top triangle. This middle one also affects at what end those drawings are at. You can see that if we push too far, get way too much detail in the skin and that won't look like a pencil drawing. Um, but if we get, get out towards the edge, yeah, and again, just to test it out, you can take away the whites and see what happens too. You can see you start losing the definition of the white lines. So, so yeah, I'm gonna leave the whites where they are and that gray looks almost like a nice HB pencil. Um, so I'm gonna leave it like that and just hit okay. So with, with that done then, I've then created my two images, which I'd save out as PNGs. I'd save export, this is one, and I'd export this, is, I exported this as my other image, so that I ended up with the two images which I used in my video to paste together to create the effect that I was after. If you like what I'm doing, please leave a like, share and comment below and I look forward to seeing you again real soon.